Hi, welcome to the uh, Google Code Review. We're going to talk about some of the fun things that have happened recently in, in the land of code. Um, I actually just came back from uh, Google Developer Day. So we had Google I.O., which was in San Francisco, a uh, large conference talking about all of the uh, you know, cool things that we're doing and other general cool things that are happening uh, on the web itself. And then we've taken that a little bit on the road with these Google Developer Days. And so we've done some in Asia and Sydney, and then uh, I was on the tour in uh, Latin America, so I got to go to Sao Paulo, Mexico City, uh, which was uh, really exciting, really cool to see the developers down there, see what they're doing, uh, see how they're working with uh, various technologies and, and uh, what their needs are. Uh, fortunately, I got a little bit of food poisoning, but uh, I'm over that now, so uh, we can go do another code review. Uh, some really cool things have happened over the last couple of weeks. Um, one of the big things was uh, the ability now to use uh, the OAuth standard to be able to authorize access to various different services that we have at Google. So we can use this standard way of accessing these different things. So you need to do some kind of mashup with Picasa or something like that. You can use OAuth to do that. So you can build your applications to use these other mashups using this just kind of one standard way instead of having to do it uh, in proprietary ways for, for different organizations. I'm really excited that we have uh, OAuth support. We've wanted it for a long time and uh, it's now totally out there and uh, ready to use. So that's pretty exciting. Another big, big bit of news for developers was the announcement with Adobe, Yahoo and Google about how we're doing better indexing of uh, Flash and the Swift file format. So uh, in the past, uh, different search engines have been able to actually you know, grab text out of the Swift files, things like that. But what about getting access to uh, resources that you may be using? And so now we have in the pipeline the ability to be able to take URLs out and uh, put those into the search pipeline and start indexing them and, and doing smart things like that, like uh, being a little bit more of a you know, human reader and uh, being able to click on buttons and, and things uh, of that nature. So this is just kind of the beginnings. We're using the searchable Swift file uh, interface that, that Adobe has and doing our own algorithms. And it's kind of going to be interesting to see what happens with all of this stuff uh, with uh, SEO and getting the most relevant data uh, to Google, you have to test it, right? So uh, expecting to see people uh, playing with this and uh, getting more and more content that's uh, able to be indexable. And uh, hopefully it's just going to go from here. Uh, it's going to be better on, on Flash and then more and more formats. Uh, and there's some uh, interesting challenges there as, as we build these applications rather than web pages that, that have data. Some uh, cool stuff in open source uh, happened recently. We just announced protocol buffers which is this core piece of uh, infrastructure that we have. Someone said we have over 10,000 uh, of these proto.proto .proto files, which is our way of defining the structured data. Uh, you kind of think of it a little bit as a, an IDL kind of like thing, uh, but it's very lean. You define this file and then we generate classes in various languages, Java, Python, C++, uh, etc. for you to be able to send these same messages. And what's really cool about it is it's, it's very fast, it's this binary format that gets produced, uh, but also versioning is built in. Uh, and that just happened through the needs of Google is having all of these machines, changing these machines so they can work with different versions, uh, making it seamless two-way. So you can send an old version or a new version to, to different versions of the actual uh, applications running and it's still going to work. So yeah, kind of exciting to, to check that out and I uh, hope to see lots of people um, taking a look at this and even building new bindings in new languages. Um, so hopefully we'll see some contributions there. The uh, Google Browser Sync uh, product that allows you to sync between Firefox, uh, your different uh, bookmark settings, uh, that's actually been open source. So we came out and said that we were no longer supporting it and you actually have abilities to do this with uh, other products too that are out there including uh, Toolbar, uh, there's features in that. But uh, rather than just saying it's discontinued, we've released it as open source and uh, Aaron Boodman, who's on the Gears team, uh, posted about that. Uh, so you can go and we'll see if a community forms and people want to keep the project going. So it's kind of nice to get it out there just to see what, what people want to do with it. There's some interesting news in testing. So uh, the Selenium team, uh, a couple of the core contributors work at Google, just announced Selenium Ice which is a way to kind of drive your testing uh, in IE. It's kind of this first step to get in there to give you really, really, really good testing within Internet Explorer. 
So uh, adding to the, the suite of Selenium tools. There's actually a ton of different things that are in uh, Selenium. So it's uh, always interesting to kind of check it out and look at the, the, the runners that are in there and the, the Ajax support and different things as they uh, get better and better over time. And it, it's definitely a huge issue is how do we test these uh, richer and richer Ajax applications. So it's uh, great to see support for things like this uh, as well as other tools that are coming out there. We also have a uh, C++ library uh, that we use internally for doing testing and mocking and things like that. And we release that as open source. So you can go through if you're working with C++. Um, there's another uh, helpful solution out there for you to do some testing. Uh, so check that out if you're interested in too. Now, Calendar, we'll talk about some GData stuff. Calendar has um, obviously the ability through GData to access uh, the different pieces of information, the different events and such in your calendar. But a lot of people just want to have visualizations of their calendar on their web page. And so we have a new little library called uh, CalViz that uh, Austin Chow has produced that allows you to, to do just that. You can kind of tweak the look and feel of your visualization and you can then build these kind of calendar widgets that you can uh, embed and use within your application too. So uh, that's pretty cool. We also released in JData uh, the new ability to uh, help with this authorization to have multiple sources. So if you do a mashup that uses calendar and spreadsheets, you can say, I want to authorize both of these resources. So the end user just has one page that says, hey, uh, is it okay for this app to use these two Google resources? So as we're seeing more people doing richer mashups using multiple services at the same time, in, uh, in the ability to do right access as well. Um, we're making that nicer from a UI perspective. Some other things that are going on, uh, someone in the Flex community built a nice little wrapper that allows you to build a, an app in Flex that integrates natively with Gears. Uh, that was pretty cool to see. And then some fun things. We just announced this Google Lively product that gives you the ability to have 3D avatars uh, in different areas like on uh, Gtalk, for example, uh, and in different ways, just kind of a fun thing that came out of labs to play with. And uh, on the iPhone, we released a little GTalk app as well. So you can use GTalk through the uh, iPhone interface to uh, talk to all your buddies, set statuses and stuff like that. And so to finish up with a good old iPhone, it comes out in just a, a couple of days now. And so uh, I'm going to see if I uh, go down to the, the Stanford. Uh, there's the Stanford Shopping Mall and there's the downtown Palo Alto, which is the original Steve store, the number one store. That always has the crazy lines. So I may do what I did last year, which is hang out there a little bit, say hi to some people, and then head to the Stanford shopping mall and walk right in and get a get a phone. So we'll see, maybe I'll get a iPhone 3G with GPS and all that fun stuff um, coming soon. We're actually on the mobile block, you'll see there's really, really cool uh, releases that we do for the iPhone. So hopefully you'll check that out. But uh, thanks for listening to the code review and talk to you soon.